Paroxetine, which is also known as Prozac, is a medication called an antidepressant which is used to treat depression and anxiety. It's a type of antidepressant called an SSRI, which are widely used across uh, age groups for these uh, kinds of conditions. But fluoxetine is the only one which is licensed specifically for, for young people between the ages of 8 to 18, and that's because there's the most research studies to support its use in these age groups. Antidepressants were originally discovered by chance many decades ago when they were given to patients with other conditions and uh, noted almost as a side effect to have effects on mood and anxiety. But it's still a bit of a mystery exactly how SSRIs and other antidepressants work in the treatment of depression and anxiety. But when we think about how these kinds of treatments work, we can think about this at different kinds of level. So from a chemical level, we know that SSRIs will increase the levels of the transmitter in the brain called serotonin, which is involved in a lot of different functions relevant to depression. But this is really only the start of the story. Why does increasing levels of serotonin in the brain allow patients to recover from these kinds of experiences? There's evidence from neuroimaging studies that um, increasing levels of serotonin particularly affects parts of the brain which are involved in emotion, both in our reactions to emotional situations and in our ability to regulate or control these uh, responses. And this is very consistent with what patients tell us when they take these type of medication, that they find it easier to uh, regulate and control their, their emotions, that they feel uh, reduced uh, effects of, of stress and other negative things that may be going on in their environment. And they're also able to stop avoiding things, difficult situations that they would otherwise shy away from. And this is uh, really interesting because it suggests that antidepressants may work in a rather similar way to other types of, of treatment for these conditions as well, because psychological treatments also seem to target these same kinds of, of things. So it may be possible to, to, to target these same processes using a variety of different types of, of treatment. How did you feel when fluoxetine was suggested as a treatment? Um, at first I was really nervous because I never heard of it before and neither of my parents and think they were also really nervous too at the prospect of me going on medication but once I spoke to my psychiatrist and they explained how it would help me then I felt quite hopeful about it because it sounded like it was something that could, I could really benefit from. Um, I had lots of questions at first because I didn't really understand how it worked or if it would have lots of bad side effects or sort of change my personality but I learned pretty quickly that I wouldn't and um, I never experienced any of that. So how did you make the decision to start taking fluoxetine? Um, I had lots of conversations with my parents uh, and with my psychiatrist and my psychologist at the time. Um, loads of like answering loads of questions um, but mostly just talking in like a conversation with all of my like doctors and my parents at once and we decided that that was the best course of action at the time. What was your experience of taking fluoxetine? Maybe you could tell us some good things and some less good things. Um, at first when I started it um, I felt a bit worse. Um, my mood was lower and my anxiety was worse. Um, and I had some shaky hands which lasted a while. But um, my psychiatrist told me that this should go away after about two months, and it did. My mood improved, and I've been on the drug for a really long time now, and my mood is much more stable, my anxiety is much better, and the biggest thing for me, I think, was that I experienced voices in my head from anxiety, and after going on fluoxetine, these voices subsided. Um, and this really helped me day to day. Um, it also helped me in my CBT sessions because I was able to more confidently like talk about some issues I had um, and that was a big bonus for me getting better in the long run. That we most commonly use with young people and the reason for that is that it's actually the only one that is licensed for adolescents in particular. And the reason for that, again, is that there is more research about it because it's been around for longer. It doesn't mean that it's the only one that is available and it doesn't mean it's the only one that works, but it's the one that we had maybe most experience of. 
and basically most people tolerate it really well which is an advantage as well and we use it for lots of different reasons we use it for depression and we use it for anxiety and we use it for OCD so we use it for more than one reason but depression is probably the main reason why we use fluoxetine and um, it's a good drug in that uh, as I said most people tolerate it really quite well and about 65% of people will get better on it okay and if that one doesn't work we've got other options okay and the second line antidepressants will get us to 70 to 80 percent of people getting better so you know it is a good it's a good drug and it does get a lot of people a lot better in themselves um i said that it was really well tolerated and it is most people don't have many side effects from it the most common ones are a bit of a stomach upset so you might feel a few kind of nausea type feelings or butterflies sometimes people describe it as and uh, they normally wear off after a few days and they normally happen in the first week or so of taking the treatment some for some people it might linger a little bit longer but they don't tend to last very long uh, also it might interfere with your sleep a bit because it has a bit of an activating effect so some people feel a bit restless at the beginning of taking it but again that tends to get better and because it's activating, we often recommend that people take it in the morning. So if they do have that activating effect, it won't interfere quite so much with their sleep. Um, less common side effects, but significant side effects. So some people can have a more kind of tummy upset than just a bit of nausea and a bit of funny feeling. Some people actually do get proper nausea and diarrhea and that can happen. Uh, there is uh, quite a lot of literature about increasing in suicidal thoughts or increasing in self-harm. I think my personal experience is that we often prescribe it for people that already have suicidal thoughts or self-harm and are not feeling very well. So it is difficult to tell what is causing what when things were there already. But what might happen is that when people are severely depressed, they often don't have the oomph or the motivation to do very much. And sometimes with antidepressants, you get that motivation back before the mood gets better. And in that period where you are more able to do things, but your mood is still quite rubbish, you might feel like self-harming more. And we tell people to tell us straight away if that does happen so that we can do something about it. The other really important side effect to talk about is um, an effect on libido or on the ability to get an erection and that's particularly important and something that I encourage everybody to discuss with young people and particularly young men because it can be a really worrying side effect and it's not uncommon and if it does happen we can switch to another antidepressant that doesn't have that effect. But obviously for a young man, if all of a the sudden they're not able to get an erection, that's quite a worrying thing. So it's something that has to be talked about and discussed. Uh, and then there are the kind of more severe and less likely to happen and quite rare side effects. And those include um, things like low sodium levels which is uh, it can cause confusion and agitation and things like that uh, you can get an allergic reaction like you can get allergic reactions to any medications and the other thing that is important to know about is something called serotoninergic syndrome so what fluoxetine does is that increases the levels of serotonin which is a neurotransmitter it's a chemical that is available in your brain and for some people if those levels are high again it causes confusion and agitation and feeling unwell so uh, that is something to watch out for but it's incredibly rare
So that's kind of in a nutshell what fluoxetin is about. As I said, you know, it's very widely used, it's very well tolerated, it's well researched, uh, it's been around for many, many years, and it is generally a very, very safe dr drug to use for most people. Do you have any advice for people who are deciding whether to take fluoxetine or not? I think talk about it with your doctors and your parents. Um, ask any questions you have. No question is a silly question. So just talk about anything you're worried about. Um, and in the first few weeks when you're on the medication, just make sure you have good support system around you because sometimes you do feel a bit worse before you feel better. Um, but you just have to keep the end in sight and it will get better. Can you tell me a bit more about any side effects that you had? Um, so one of the side effects which I wasn't really uh, initially told about and I, I didn't really I didn't really know about it at all until I was a bit older was um, that on the medication you sometimes have like a lack of sex drive and this wasn't a big deal for me at first when I was younger but as I got older um, I thought that the problem was like due to myself but mm. when I spoke to my doctor I realised actually it was a result of the medication and that was quite like shocking to me at the time and I didn't know but it was actually really helpful to know mm. because then I wasn't blaming myself for it and I knew that it was just one of the side effects um, but it can be something that's like a real problem for some people and you should definitely talk to like your doctor about it if, if it's like impacting you a lot because I think it's quite common. Yeah, for um, children and adolescents with depression and anxiety uh, psychological therapies, talking therapies are still the first line treatment but in some cases um, using a, an antidepressant is advised and among all the antidepressants the best evidence, the more robust data are about fluoxetine uh, that shows, uh, the data show that it is effective uh, especially in the acute term, so after a few weeks of treatment, this can be a beneficial treatment that, that kids can receive. It's very important to, um, to do research in this area because at the moment the majority of the studies are for a very short period of time. We're talking about two months, three months, and usually these uh, medications are taken for longer. So there are some studies suggesting that fluoxetine also over the long term has a beneficial effect and this is why it is the first line treatment today. But for the other antidepressants there, there's no a lot of evidence, uh, especially in terms of long term treatment. The other problem is uh, the quality of the studies is not great, so we need better studies which means recruiting people with specific characteristics and, and be sure that the treatment is delivered in an appropriate way and also the outcome is collected properly. So the quality has improved over time, but for old medications like fluoxetine, of course, uh, there's not a lot of evidence out there. So we need to uh, encourage the funders uh, to do studies in this area also with um, all the drugs. In terms of outcomes, so what these studies measure, they usually measure response, which is um, a, a reduction of the severity of the depressive symptoms, at least 50%, which is a significant reduction. And also they measure remission, which is having the symptoms go so low that basically there's no symptom at all. The other outcome is uh, dropout, so whether people, patients in this case aged 6 uh, until 18, to 18, whether after a few weeks they are still taking the medication. This is called acceptability and it is a rough measure to say that the drug is somehow effective and also well tolerated. These are not magic pills. They have to be incorporated into a management of care which is uh, 360 degree. Um, at the same time, uh, I would be reassuring uh, these people taking fluoxetine because it is a drug uh, that has been discovered 
almost 40, more than 40 years ago, so it's very well studied. It is one of the few drugs <clears throat> that are in the uh, essential, the list of essential medicines of the WHO, the World Health Organization. So it is available all across the world because we know it is effective and safe. But of course, as all treatments, the medication does not work for everybody. So unfortunately, there's a bit of trial and error. But if prescribed an antidepressant for depression, I think fluoxetine should be the first line treatment. How did you find being on medication? Um, I found it not too tricky. Um, with fluoxetine you take it at the same time every day um, and I take it once a day. So once you get into the habit of it, it's um, quite easy to remember. You just have to remember to get your prescription. Um, I at first didn't really want to like talk about it with my friends because I thought it was like, embarrassing but I quickly realised that like actually they they were just there to support me and um, they like they were happy to, to help me with remembering to take my tablets if I need to, when I need to as well and that it wasn't like a strange thing to be on tablets every day that actually lots of people were on tablets every day for lots of different reasons. Um, initially I think the idea of taking tablets, having to swallow tablets and things was a bit difficult but you get used to it very quickly and they don't taste gross or anything. Um, how long did it take before you started to feel better? I think for me it was about two months. Um, it wasn't like an instant thing where I noticed the difference. It was more that after a few months, when I was sort of talking to my psychiatrist, on reflection I could see that actually like my mood had been more stable and the voices, they didn't go away straight away. That took um, like a few years with CBT as well. Um, but they got quieter and more easy to manage definitely once I went on the medication. I think just that it's more common than you think it is for people to take medication. That the medication alone is not going to solve everything but it will definitely help you be able to deal with things better um, and that it's not the side effects and things, they're not as daunting as they seem on the back of the box. Um, the ones I experienced were very minor and most of them didn't last more than a few months anyway. Um, so try not to be worried about it because I know it can seem scary. Um, but it, it will help you in the long run and you'll be able to look back and see that the medication made a big difference. I think at first I was a big worry that I might be on the medication forever, but um, I have, I'm like confident that um, you can decrease it when you feel ready, slowly, um, at your own pace, or then you can increase it again. I've decreased my medication in the past and then increased it back up again when I realised I needed to. Um, you are not going to be on the medication forever. For some people, they'll be on it for longer than others because that's what's right for them. But it's not something you need to be worried about because it's not addictive and it's, it's something that you'll be in control of. You can have that conversation with your doctor about whether you want to stay on for longer or you want to like go off it. Um, it's not something that's forced upon you totally. It's, it's your choice.